Do you remember your last web scrapping project? How was it? If you didn't try web scrapping as a way of making money, in this video I'll tell you about the 5 enemies of your success. So let's play the web scrapping project of your nightmares bingo game. There are a bunch of websites that are very hard or even barely possible to scrape in a reasonable time. They are full of JavaScript and protecting dark magic that protects their content from scrapping because the data they provide have a real value. I'm talking about things like Airbnb, Google Maps, Zillow, Amazon, eBay and many others. And there are five points or five causes that can make your work a nightmare. Suppose you have a client that wants you to scrape Amazon or Google Maps and he wants to get at least 100,000 certain records. The key points of your cooperation are the possibility to scrape the website and the estimates, the time you'll need to get the scraping done. On the first question, you'd answer, yes, of course, I can scrape Amazon or Airbnb or Zillow. But the most scary thing here is that the success of the scraping is not dependent on your efforts. To be exact, it depends on you only partially. Mostly, the success of the scrapping depends on the website itself. And that is why the scrapping project is not the same as the development of a web service, for example, where success depends on you only. You can't rely on Zillow or Google Maps or any other target site in your success in scrapping. And that's why you need a more reliable partner to do your web scrapping job, something like Ocean's Eleven, but only one. The uncertainty is your first enemy. Then you want to estimate your work. You have to say to your client how quickly you can provide the data. In turn, the speed of the web scrapping project consists of two parts, the developing time and the scrapping time itself. The scrapping time depends on the needed quantity of records. For example, the Bright Data Service shows me that Amazon.com bestseller products data set has at least 2 and 3 millions of records. It's a huge quantity. The Google Maps business's dataset contains 8 millions of records. Okay, just let's keep in mind these values. At least let's keep in mind that the Bright Data has Amazon dataset with 2 millions of records and the Google Maps dataset with 8 millions of records. Your next step is to examine the website. You open Amazon and see that the last pages don't contain all the information you need to scrape. And it means that you have to get the detailed pages of each search result in a list and get the data from the page. If you use Python, you'll probably use Beautiful Soup, which is quite slow parsing library. Selenium to get JavaScript driven pages is even slower. But probably you will need Selenium because of JavaScript on the web pages. But let's suppose that getting data from one page will take just a half of a second. Half of a second to download the page and parse it. So you need to download 100,000 pages. And our 100,000 pages become 50,000 of seconds of work of your scrapper. Let's divide 50,000 by 3,600 seconds. This is the number of seconds in an hour and we will get about 13 hours of work for your scrapper. It's too slow. Even if the scrapping of one page will take three times less time, the whole scrapping process will take about four hours. It's still so slow, because you have to do a lot of experiments to get only the data. So, the speed of your scrapper, which you should write, is the second enemy you have to beat. The solution to that is to write an asynchronous or a multi-threaded scraper and scrape the website in several threads or workers. But this abnormal speed of downloading and reading of the website from only one IP will cause your immediate ban or showing you a capture, just to be sure that you are not a robot. These are the third and fourth enemies. You have to write an asynchronous code and immediately you got a risk of being banned and the capture. 
The solution to this is to use proxies and capture solving services. To use capture solving services, you have to write a wrapper to provide captures to it. And it will work with the simple captures, but it won't with the Google recapture. So you need to use a lot of proxies from the same country to mimic a lot of users. Usually, free proxies are not reliable and are too slow to use. And so you have to use a bunch of paid proxies and a capture solving service. The other headache is to provide to your client not just the data, but the tool that he can use to get data by his request. This task requires you to build a system that can be embedded to the client's infrastructure. It's a much more complex task and, of course, it doesn't eliminate the above said enemies. But this time, the complexity will probably be too high. And of course, the solution to this is to use the same reliable partner that will help you either to provide requested data or to build a scraping service with lesser efforts. I don't know, guys. What's better? Write the Amazon or Zillow or Airbnb scrapper from scratch or just use the right tool to do it? Services like Bright Data because it's a perfectly balanced service. They provide data sets of LinkedIn, Google Maps, Crunchbase companies, Indeed.com and others. They provide proxy infrastructure and capture solving services. All in one. Less headache for me. They also provide API that can be integrated into any workflow. Anyway, using of the infrastructure is much more safe and reliable than writes my own from scratch. Those were the most famous and well-known problems of any web scrapping project. It was the Red-Eyed Coder Club. See you in the next video.